Good morning and welcome to this course module on refrigerants. We will look at what are the different refrigerants that we use in our refrigeration and air conditioning system. And in consecutive videos, we will talk about the different thermodynamic properties, safe working properties, physical properties that are required in selection of different refrigerants. OK. So what is a refrigerant? See, a refrigerant is actually a working fluid. OK, so here in a refrigeration system, we need a working fluid and that working fluid is going to be your refrigerant. So it is basically a working fluid. OK, and what does this working fluid do? It extracts heat from the region that requires to be cool. So the work, the, the function of the working fluid is to remove heat from the storage space and then it has to be dumped onto the sink. OK, so here we have we define this refrigerant as a substance which is capable of absorbing heat from another substance. So the main function of the refrigerant is to extract heat from a region of space or from another substance. OK, some of the examples ice, air, brine solution. Brine solution is nothing but a salt solution. So all these are examples of refrigerants. OK, so what does the refrigerant do? It absorbs heat and what are the different types of heat that we have? So either it can remove heat in the latent form or it can also remove heat in the sensible form. So uh, we have already discussed this so many times. So in sensible heat, you simply cool the temperature of the substance. The temperature of the substance lowers. OK, there is no phase change associated with the heat transfer. Then we call such heat transfer as sensible heat. When there is a heat transfer resulting in a phase change of the substance, then we call it as a latent heat. But whenever you have latent heat, whenever there is a latent heat of vaporization, more amount of heat can be removed. So it is always uh, preferred that a refrigerant which is capable of getting vaporized is used as or is probably selected in most of the refrigeration systems. OK, so uh, a refrigerant which is capable of removing heat or absorbing heat in the latent form, they are more efficient when compared with those refrigerants which are capable of removing heat in the sensible form. So in the olden days, people use air, ammonia, carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide, metal chloride. These are the different refrigerants which were used in the olden days. But then freons replaced all of them. So chlorofluorocarbons, it, they st uh, started replacing all of these refrigerants which were used in the olden days. OK. Let's move on to the next slide. So how are they classified? So the major classification is the primary refrigerant and the secondary refrigerant. The primary refrigerant is a refrigerant which is directly used in refrigeration. What do you mean by direct usage in refrigeration? Where the refrigerant in itself is capable of removing heat from the substance or the storage space. OK, so the refrigerant directly is in action. It's, it's removing heat from the substance or the storage space. What about secondary refrigerant? The, the refrigerant which is removing heat from the storage space or the stored materials that is playing a secondary role, which means say suppose you have uh, you have one a compartment where you have so you have one fluid one fluid or one refrigerant however you wish to call and there is another fluid, say it is a secondary refrigerant. What happens is this primary refrigerant, it removes heat from the secondary refrigerant so that the temperature of the secondary refrigerant is lower. Let's say this is TS and let's say this is TP, T for P for the primary refrigerant and S for the secondary refrigerant. So once the heat is removed in this heat exchanger where the exit temperature of the secondary refrigerant, the TS is lesser than TP. 
So this secondary refrigerant is now capable of removing heat from something else. So in case of primary refrigerants, the primary refrigerant themselves, they go into the storage space and they remove heat from the substance, of course, through the tubings or through the pipes. OK, the secondary refrigerants in case of secondary refrigerant, this secondary refrigerant was basically cooled by a primary refrigerant and then this secondary refrigerant is now taken to the cold storage space where now it removes heat from the cold storage space or the materials from which the heat needs to be removed. OK, so this is the basic classification. Either you have the primary refrigerants or the secondary refrigerants. OK, so to, to name some of the primary refrigerants, we have all these. So we will discuss them in this first module. So halocarbon compounds, which means a mixture of carbon and halogens. Halogen family, chlorine, fluorine, chlorine, fluorine, and iodine, all these are halogens. So when you have a mixture of halogen and carbon, then you call it as halocarbon compounds. Then you have azotropes. So these azotropes, they are a mixture of refrigerants. We will see that in detail in a couple of slides. Then hydrocarbons, a mixture of hydrogen and carbon. Inorganic compounds, where there is no presence of oxygen unsaturated organic compounds. So once again, these are going to be organic compounds, hydrocarbons, but the carbon is going to have a double or a triple bond. OK, so that is your classification. So let's look at one by one. So halocarbon compounds, as I said, this was invented and developed by Charles Kettering and Dr. Thomas McGee in the year 1928. OK, so what is that structure? You have carbon. And here uh, it, it seems like a double bond, but it's not a double bond. It's only a single bond. So you have C. So carbon, it has got four valence electrons. So you have got one bond is already connected with one carbon over here. Then you have chlorine, another bond connected with chlorine, another one with fluorine. And so similarly over here also. I'm sorry about that. So this guy over here is chlorine. This guy over here is chlorine and then you have fluorine. So this guy is C2, Cl4, F2. OK, so it is di difluoro tetrachloro carbon. OK, so you have two carbon atoms, four chlorine atoms then two fluorine atoms. OK, so this is basically a single bond. Uh, uh, so in the pictorial representation, just to show the connectivity, it is shown like double lines, but does, that doesn't mean that it is a double bond. It is only a single bond. OK, so a mixture of carbon and halogen in this case, both chlorine and fluorine. OK, so whenever you have a combination of carbon and uh, halogen atoms, then such compounds are called as halocarbon compounds. So there are so many market names for them. They call it as freon, genetron, isotron, octon. All these are halocarbon compounds. OK, so the, this comes under the primary refrigerant. Then you have azotropes. What are azotropes? They are going to be mixture of different refrigerants, at least two refrigerants. OK, so a mixture of two refrigerants and the speciality is they do not separate into their individual components. That means I have a mixture of say I have X as one refrigerant and Y as another refrigerant. So X, Y together, it is called an azotrope. OK, so when this acetrope is used as a refrigerant, no matter when there is a change in a pressure or when there is a change in the temperature or you have both the temperature and the pressure changes, the components don't split up into X and Y. They still remain as a combination of X, Y. OK, so they exhibit a behavior or a property which is a combination of X and Y. So it's almost like a homogeneous substance where this this combination X Y has got a particular property and this property is not going to change whether whenever whether you have a change in the pressure or a temperature or both. And even when there is a phase change, the thermodynamic properties of this particular azotrope is not going to change. So the thermodynamic properties are fixed. So one such example is given refrigerant 500, which is a mixture of 73.8% Freon 12 and 26.2% Freon 152. So in, in a couple of slides later, I mean in, in the later videos, we will see uh, what is this 152 and when to what do they stand for? We will learn that a little bit later. OK, 
So that is your acetrope. So acetrope is a mixture of refrigerants and this mixture of refrigerant, it is going to exhibit a single property and that property is not going to change no matter whether there is a change in pressure or temperature or both or even a phase change for that matter. OK, so that is azotrope. Then we have hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons, methane, ethane, propane, all these are hydrocarbons, um, a compound comprising carbon and hydrogen. So the, those are called as the hydrocarbons and they possess satisfactory thermodynamic properties which or which fit for the selection of a refrigerant, but the only disadvantage is because they are they have the component carbon, they are highly flammable. So uh, in in most of the uh, real case scenarios, we avoid using these hydrocarbons as refrigerants because they are flammable. OK, then we have inorganic compounds. So inorganic compounds where you don't have a hydrocarbon. OK, carbon and the mixture of carbon and uh, hydrogen is absent. OK. So universally uh, they are used at, uh, before the introduction of the halocarbon compounds. So before uh, the freons were there in the market. So all these inorganic compounds were used for the refrigeration systems, but uh, each of them have their own limitations. Like uh, even in today's scenario, they are still used in some of uh, the systems because they have the inherent thermodynamic and physical properties which give them an upper hand or which makes them suitable for selection in some of the refrigeration systems. OK, so some of them are named here. Say, for example, ammonia. Uh, we will talk about this refrigerant number later in a video separately and we will talk about how all these refrigerants are named after. OK, and this is not 118. This is supposed to be 718. OK, uh, so sorry about that. And we can see ammonia is used in ice plants. Water is used in steam jet refrigeration. Air, it is primarily used in aircraft refrigeration system. Even in today's scenario, people use aircraft. Air is the primary refrigerant for aircraft refrigeration. Carbon dioxide in shift refrigeration, sulfur dioxide in home refrigeration in the olden days, not now. OK, uh, sulfur dioxide is not used nowadays. Then we also have another group called the unsaturated organic compounds. So unsaturated organic compounds, this is also going to be a combination of uh, carbon and hydrogen. So this is going to be a hydrocarbon again. But the moment you say unsaturated, the difference between unsaturated organic compound and unsaturated organic compound is, see the saturated organic compound. Let me write it, the saturated organic compound. One example, let me say, one example is say methane. Methane is an example for saturated organic compound. We said carbon has got four valence electrons, so you, you it has got four bonds, okay, four single bonds with hydrogen. Okay, so whenever you have a single bond with reference to carbon, then that is called as a saturated organic compound. So that makes all alkanes falling under the saturated organic compound. But if you take unsaturated hydrocarbon, so you have a double bond or a triple bond. So when you have a double bond, so there are two more hydrogen atoms which can be accommodated for each carbon atom. So that makes it C2H4, which is ethylene. So so ethylene is an example of unsaturated organic compound. So whenever you have a double bond or a triple bond, then that becomes an unsaturated organic compound. So suppose you have a triple bond uh, between the carbon atoms, so you can accommodate one more. So that makes it C2H2. So C2H4 and C2H2, these are examples of unsaturated organic compounds whereas alkanes are examples of saturated organic compounds. So your alkenes and alkynes, they are unsaturated hydrocarbons. So unsaturated organic compounds, they are also used as refrigerants and mainly the hydrocarbon group with ethylene and propylene base, they are called as unsaturated organic compounds. So some of the examples are mentioned here, trichloroethylene, dichloroethylene, ethylene, propylene, all these are examples of 
unsaturated organic compounds. So all of them either have a double bond or a triple bond. Okay, so when you have such compounds, we call them as unsaturated organic compounds. So all these are examples of primary refrigerants. So we talked about halocarbons. We talked about halocarbon compounds. We talked about acetropes. We talked about hydrocarbon compounds. We talked about inorganic compounds and unsaturated organic compounds. All these fall under the classification of primary refrigerants, wherein these refrigerants can be directly taken to the refrigerated space to remove heat from the storage space or the stored material. Okay, so that is all we have in this first video. So in the next video, we will talk about the thermodynamic properties of refrigerants. Thank you.